Get a Washington Groucho. You hit a long ball, don't you? Huh? Well, the only difference between Jimmy Thompson, the golfer, and me is about, uh, I would say, about 300 yards <laughs> on the drive. You live that close to each other? Yes. <laughs> what uh, line of work are you in, uh, Jim? Well, Groucho, I'm the business representative of the International Sound Technicians, Local 695. Of you mean IATSE? The International Alliance, Theatrical Stage Employees, and Motion Picture Operators, United States is and Canada. Sound? Well, when the title is that long, the pay is usually very short. <laughs> is your union pretty powerful in Hollywood? Well, we have... What a uh, ridiculous question that is. <laughs> we have about One more line like that and everything here will be pitched up. <laughs> we have about 800 members, Groucho, and they all seem to be working right now. They're all working? The whole 800? That you makes... call that a strong union? What do you use for pickets? <laughs> Well, tell me something. Uh, when you're working, what, what kind of clothes do you wear, Jim? When I'm working? Yeah. Well, a suit like this, I see. I thought maybe in your job you just wore a union suit. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Joella, where do you work? I'm on the Times. Really? I've been behind the Times for years. <laughs> you mean the L.A. Times? Yes. What department are you in? Are you the one who instructs the delivery boys? Uh... How to throw the paper up on the roof so it won't slide off? <laughs> or to be sure to throw it on the, uh, on the lawn without wrapping when it's raining? No, I'm in display. I have yet. to dry my paper every morning. I put it in the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your job on the paper, Joe? I have charge of the auction pages for the Times. We feel they're the most successful auction pages in the country. What sort of work does your husband do, Joe? Oh, I'm not married, Groucho. You're not married? A pretty girl like you, and not married? Well, you're attractive, uh, Joella. You have a good job. Uh, uh, can you cook? Yes, I can cook. Are you a good cook? Yes. What is your specialty in cooking? I mean, almost well, every... I, I like to make Cantonese and curries, and my particular pet is canning. Canning? Canning? Canning. My last three sponsors were experts at canning, huh? <laughs> what sort of things do you can, Joe? Oh, like pickles and peaches, pears, apricots. All in one can? That must be quite a mess. Huh? <laughs> what do you do? Auction them off to the lowest bidder? No, I enter them at the county fair. I, I enter All the these things combined? No, not combined. All of them separate jars. I had 19 entries at the Los Angeles County Fair, and I won 10 ribbons. You won 10 prizes mm -hmm. at the county fair? Mm -hmm. Well, isn't canning a sort of an old-fashioned art with home freezers and supermarkets? I didn't realize women still did this, this sort of thing. Would you advise other women to take up canning as a hobby? Oh, definitely. I always tell them that eat what you can, and what you can't, you can. That's pretty clever, Joe. <laughs> what does that mean, what you just said? You can what you can, what you can, you can. Just what I said. I don't, I don't understand it. Could you break it down? Well... Could you elaborate on that? You eat what you can, and what you can't can, you put up in little bottles. <laughs> you know, Cole Porter did a whole Broadway show around this, Joe. It's called Can Can. <laughs> and I think Bay Lynn wrote a song about it, too. Do you remember that? No. It isn't surprising, the temperature's rising, she certainly can, can, can. <laughs> you go see, there's no business like show business, and listen to Marilyn Monroe, the dramatic actor, sing that. <laughs> she announced tonight she's going to play Hamlet next year. Huh? <laughs> she didn't name the Hamlet, but it's one of those little towns in Illinois. <laughs> Well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, we're going to start you off with $100, and you increase your bankroll by answering any four questions. All right, now, what are you going to start with? We're, we're going, going high. We're going to shoot for the 100. 100? Okay, okay. Uh, you selected movie quiz, is that right? Who played Dr. Watson to Basil Rathbone, Sherlock Holmes, in the movie series? Who played Dr. Watson? Mm. Talk it over. It's your partner. He just died a couple of years ago. I can't think of his name right now, Groucho. I've worked with him many times. Mm. 
Nigel Bruce. Nigel Bruce, yes. yes. I've worked on a lot of pictures with him. Well, you still have $50. Oh, I don't get discouraged. <clears throat> That's only the first one. Now, what are you going to go for? Well, we're going to huh? shoot 90. 90? Clark Gable and Cla uh, Claudette uh, Colbert won Academy Awards for their roles in the best picture of 1934. What was it called? It happened one night. It happened one night is right. <laughs> $140. Now what do you want, Troy? Um, 80? 80, yeah. $80. What Hollywood studio uses the picture of a woman holding a lighted torch as its trademark? Columbia. Columbia Studios. Columbia, the gem of Gower Street. Mm -hmm. You now climb to $220. Now I, s I presume you're going for 70, huh? Shoot. This is your last chance to beat the other couples. Judy Garland stars in the musical remake of A Star Is Born. Who played the role originally? Talk it over. Oh, no. It's Janet Gaynor. Oh. You wind up with $110. Groucho, Mr. John Ketchum, and Mama Weiss are ready to talk to you. So, folks, if you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll always have with you. Evening. Mama Weiss, eh? Uh, right. Don't you run a restaurant? Seems to me I got poison in your place. I'm <laughs> Was that you? Huh? Was that you? Me. You, huh? No, no more restaurant. No. We leased it out. Oh, I see. I got other things to do now. Uh -huh. well, what are you doing now, Mama? Not only that I got Mama Weiss salad dressing on the market now, but beside that, I have a five days television show. Oh, really? Show. Oh. Cooking show. You're on TV now, huh? Right. You got sick of working, just like I did, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mama, if you don't mind revealing your age, uh, how old are you? 110. <laughs> See, I thought you were older than that. You certainly keep your age well, Mama. <laughs> Look, why You don't have to be so be? modest about your age. Why don't you admit you're around 45? Now that you said that, all right. But why should we... <laughs> why should we tell how old we are when we feel good? Like a spring chicken. You feel oh, like a spring chicken? Exactly. How much would you charge to hatch a dozen eggs for me? <laughs> have to be a hen already. No. <laughs> well, we can what we can, and what we can, we can. <laughs> Who are you again? Uh, John Ketchum. Ketchum? Oh, I remember your firm, law firm, wasn't it? Ketchum and Cheatham, lawyers? <laughs> father was a lawyer, but uh, I don't remember what his partner's name was. I don't think it was Cheatham, though. It wasn't? I don't think so. Well, who do you work for? Uh, I assume you have a job, uh, John. No, Groucho, I haven't. I'm retired now. You retired? Yes. Well, what did you formally do? I was with the U.S. government for 27 years. Is that so? <laughs> well, what was your job with the government? I was... In the uh, vegetable in, department? No, I was in the State Department in the U.S. Foreign Service. Oh, plenipotentiary, huh? Eh? Well, I didn't quite make that. <laughs> well, you might have, because I don't know what it means. <laughs> so what was your job, John? Were you a counsel? No, I started out as vice counsel. And a vice counsel, eh? Yes. You fellas certainly do specialize. <laughs> <laughs> then I was eventually promoted to counsel, and I ended up as a counselor of uh, embassy and legation. I see. Oh, you look like you'd be a fine ambassador. You look Thank like you. you have an ingratiating personality. And I'm always glad to meet a man who has courage enough to wear a vest. <laughs> <laughs> I'd known you were wearing that, I'd have worn my red one tonight. <laughs> I would. You're on it, Well, thank you. Well, you're a nice, quiet, modest couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you. Uh, but it's time to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $110. And the secret word is face. Well, now, you selected geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. And you're partners. And we want one answer between you on everything. Now, what do you want to start with? A $10 question, 40 50 80 100 70 
Seventy. All right. Seventy, is that all right? If he said so. All right, what mountain in Alaska is the highest point in North America? Talk it over now, you're partners. Don't answer <clears throat> before you decide between you. What mountain in Alaska? She's going to be a lot of help. <laughs> Mount McKinley. Mount McKinley is right. <laughs> a good start. You have $170 now. Mama, how did you know that? Oh, I know all these things. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy, just like a pie. Like yes. make a strudel for me. <clears throat> all right, now, what are you going to uh, take this time? <laughs> Up to you. Might as well go for the jackpot. He says 80. 80 dollars. In what country is the Flemish language spoken? Flemish language is spoken in uh, Belgium. That is right. <laughs> you now have two hundred fifty dollars. He says ninety. Ninety. What is the capital of Montana? Helena. Helena is right. And what's your last? You now have three hundred forty dollars. And is your last chance to be the other couples? What are you going to go for? Hundred. Hundred. Four of our states come together at one common point. Three of these are Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. What is the fourth state? Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. You name the fourth. Um, if you don't know, guess. Kansas. No, you're way off. It's Utah. Well, you wind up with $170. Thank you. We invited some secretaries to our show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Pat Eckenrode to be on the show, and her partner is a special guest, Mr. Ali Wassel. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. <laughs> Pat Station House and uh, Ali Wassel, huh? Pat uh, Evenrode, is that the way you pronounce it? No, it's Eckenrode. Oh, I thought it was the back part of a rowboat, huh? <laughs> Pat Eckenrode, you're very attractive, and I'm looking forward to a little tete-a-tete -tete with you uh, later. But first, I want to speak with the gentleman in the pale yellow turban. <laughs> what is your name again, sir? Ali Wassel. Ali Wassel. How old are you, Mr. Wassel? Twenty-five. Twenty-five, huh? What part of uh, Wyoming are you from? <laughs> no, I am from Pakistan. Pakistan, eh? Huh? Well, you're a long way from home, and we're happy to have you here. Huh? We've never had a Pakistani in here before. Up to now, I thought that was a new housing project near Chicago. Huh? <laughs> well, Pat, uh, let's have our little tete-a-tete, -tete, shall we? We shall. How old are you, Pat? I'm 25. A lovely age. <laughs> Could you uh, get interested in a man like me? <laughs> Well, I could, perhaps, but I happen to be married. What? <laughs> well, we can what we can, and we can what we always can. <laughs> and when we can, can, we can. <laughs> well, back to Ali Wassel. Huh? <laughs> Ali, old thing, are you married? No, I'm not. Why not? You're young, handsome, debonair, smart. How is it you're not married? Well, perhaps I haven't had the time. You see, in America, you rush things. In Pakistan, we take a long time getting married. As a matter of fact, a wedding ceremony takes at least six months. Sometimes it goes to as long as two years. And uh, the way customs are, you don't just marry the girl. You end up by marrying the whole family. <laughs> well, you married the whole family here too, Ali. <laughs> Only you don't discover that until after they've nailed you to the wall. <laughs> well, what are you doing in this country, Ali? Uh, same old thing, negotiating for a few million dollars? No, fortunately, for the time being, we've had all the money from the United States that we need for some time to come. I, uh, I first Perhaps came over here. Possibly. <laughs> I came to the United States to study. I studied at Harvard University and Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the East, and then UCLA. Mm -hmm. Then I'm lecturing now on international affairs in the Far East. What do you plan on, on, on becoming eventually? 
I'm not sure for the time being I'm interested in promoting better cultural understanding between the United States and Asia. Mm -hmm. Now, Pat, uh, what about you? Uh, do you have a job? Yes, I work for William R. Stott. William R. Stotts? That's right. Is that any relation to thermostats? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sorry too, but... Uh... <laughs> William R. Stotts and Company were the uh, oldest brokerage house in Southern California. I thought I lived in the oldest broken-down house in Southern California. <laughs> what do you mean, a brokerage house? Are you in the stock market? That's right, stock market. Oh, well, what do you do for this bro? Do you water the stocks every morning? <laughs> <laughs> would be nice, but I don't. I'm a no, private who does secretary. That, huh? You're a private what? Private secretary. Private secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Is your job real private or just uh, kind of semi? Uh... Well, it's kind of semi, I guess. Uh -huh. You wear running shoes during the day? <laughs> well, how is the market these days? Frankly, I've been afraid to look recently. Uh... Well, I, I think in the last year we've probably experienced, well, I think the best year in about 25. That's true. It's very good, very prosperous year. How far do you think we are from the ultimate disaster? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allie, uh, is that what I should call you, Allie? Indeed, yes. Or a wassail. Huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, I want to uh, observe the decorum and dignity that you're entitled to. No, well, Allie's perfectly fine. Allie, um, well, let's get back to you. Tell us something about Pakistan, uh, briefly. Uh, do they have television over there? Not yet. It's still on the experimental level. Well, we... it is here too, but uh, <laughs> at least we brave it through. <laughs> no, it's going to take some You're time right. for us. But we are making very rapid progress. To give you an example, Karachi, which is now the capital, used to be, you know, you have what you call one horse towns here, I believe. Mm -hmm. It used to be a one camel town. <laughs> you see, camels are used. <laughs> camels are used in that part of Pakistan for transportation. But the population has grown so rapidly that now we have hundreds of camels. Of course, we also have trains and cars and so on. I see. Do these but camels have filters? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I made the mistake of studying English in England, and I don't quite understand American always. <laughs> Allie, I, I think you're very fortunate that you don't understand me. <laughs> that was a feeble joke, and I was just trying to be facetious, and you'll forgive me. Eh? Well, Allie, uh, uh, a turban, you know, that's this, that's what you call them, aren't yes, turbans? Yes, indeed. That isn't something you see here frequently. Uh, do you get much uh, comment about it over here? Yes, indeed. I have very fantastic experiences in this fascinating country of yours practically every day. Is that so? Once, I remember, in a restaurant in Beverly Hills, a little old lady was looking at me with great interest and she came over and asked me very quietly if she may touch my turban. And she walked all around and she asked me what I had inside. <laughs> of course, uh, she apparently had a picture of the mysterious Orient and she wanted a fascinating answer. I just couldn't disappoint her, so I told her I have a snake. <laughs> she asked me if it was poisonous and I said yes, it was a cobra. She asked me if I wasn't worried about it, and I said, no, you see, I have it insured. <laughs> that's true, you can get snake insurance here. <laughs> well, that's pretty crude, Ali, asking you what you have inside up there. Do, do you really have a cobra up there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ali, you're, you're an excellent goodwill ambassador for Pakistan. People like you with a sense of humor could do more to bring the East and the West together than three tons of treaties and speeches. They ought to send about two dozen fellows like you. I want to ask you one more question. This is kind of fresh, Ali, but I must ask you this. When you unroll your hat at night, does it say his or hers? <laughs> Well, I'd certainly like to continue talking to you two for different reasons. <laughs> but the time has come, the walrus said, to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the second couple is leading with $170. Uh, this is an old-fashioned spelling bee. Now, you get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to pronounce the word and then spell it and then pronounce it again. Is this clear? Yes. You pronounce the word, spell it, and then pronounce it again. And remember your partners. So talk it over before each answer. Now, what do you want to start with? 
Ten, fifty, eighty. Hundred. A hundred dollars. All right, spell the word bassinet, meaning a wicker basket used as a cradle for young children. Bassinet. Talk it over. B-A-S-S-I-N-E-T-T-E. -S -S no. It's B-A-S-S-I-N-E-T. These are tricky, these things. <laughs> now, what do you want to go for? I'm trying 90. The little ones are easy. The hard ones are tough. I'm trying 90. 90. Spell the word impresario, meaning the manager or conductor of an opera or a concert company. Impresario? E-M-P-R-E-S-S-A-R-I-O. I-M-P-R-E-S-A-R-I-O. Well, you now have $25. Yeah. Do you have a round-trip ticket to Pakistan? <laughs> you going for 80? Don't have to. You can go 70. 50, 40, 70. All right, spell the word accommodate, meaning to render fit or suitable. To adapt, conform. A C C O M O D A. No, no, no. A C C A. A C C O. No. A C C O M M O D A T E. Once again. Slow now. Come on. A C C O M M O D A T E. That is right. Now you have ninety-five dollars. This is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? I'm trying to easy. 80. 80. 80? Spell the word collateral, as in collateral security. C-O-L-L-A-T-E-R-A-L. That is absolutely all right. You wind up with $175. All right, here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. I'm sure everyone has seen pictures of the famous statue of the thinker. For $2,000, what was the French sculptor who created the thinker? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Rodin. Rodin is right. <laughs> that is right. You win $2,000. And how much in the quiz, George? $175 in the quiz. <laughs> what are you going to do with your money, Ali? Uh, if you will excuse me for saying it, I'm thinking of starting a new television show of my own. Not a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Hoist by my own petard. <laughs> not, not a quiz show, I warn you. I'll consult you what it is going to be. Okay, I'll sue you in every country in the Far East. Eh? <laughs> well, good night and good luck.